today, we will encounter an experience that Paul had when he was imprisoned, and we'll reflect on our own imprisonments in our lives. Please rise as you are able for the confession and assurance which is printed in your bulletin on page four. The greatest forgiveness comes through Jesus Christ, who died for our sins and rose to give us new life. Through Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And we can just wave or peace or make a sign of a cross to greet each other. Our gathering song this morning is for all the faithful women. We're singing verses one, two, and last. That's the way it's written, and that's the way we're singing it.
God of freedom, Paul and Silas worshipped you, even when they were flogged and imprisoned. Transform our hearts, so that we may also rejoice in you at all times and in all situations. Amen. house. 
And at the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire house were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as we are able for the song. Right, right, right. 
It's not yet, not yet, <laughs> not ever, <laughs> not ever. But there are places where we've been trapped. Like let's say you're in a class and it's, it's, it's your worst subject, and you really don't like, I don't know, math or something. Yeah, I've put you on math, but let's just pretend you don't like math. Like, oh, I don't care about math. But you don't have to feel trapped. You can sort of, sort of say, you know what, God, I can still talk to you. Hey, thanks for everything today. And you're going to be with me in that class. And I'm going to sing a little song in my heart. So I'm going to in your heart. And you're not out loud. Um, what's another place where you might be like, you really don't want to be there? What about if you um, don't feel good that day? If you're feeling sick, is that maybe a place I don't want to feel sick? And sometimes you say, oh, I want to stay in bed and I don't, I don't feel good. You might feel trapped. Guess what can you do? You can sing a song and you can pray. We did not just have fire drills the way you have here in Maryland. We also had earthquake drills. So we were told every once in a while, earthquake drill, get under your desk and pull your hands and feet inside in case there was some damage in the classrooms. Sometimes a building falls in an earthquake, but sometimes the earth shakes in different ways when our stable foundations in our lives are compromised. The earth shakes when we learn about people who feel trapped in a bad relationship, in a prejudiced judgment, in a steel factory, in Mariupol, in depression. In these types of earthquakes, there are no desks to hide under. We cannot stop the pain completely. The earth shook a bit on April 30th when we heard Ashley and Winona Judd announce their mother Naomi's death. They said, we sisters today experienced a tragedy. We lost our beautiful mother to the disease of mental illness. The earth shook for Naomi's family, but also for many friends and fans around the world who were stunned. And while we don't know specifically what that means, that she died of mental illness, we do know that there were many interviews with Naomi where she shared her struggle with debilitating depression, which caused her to consider taking her life. Again, we do not know how this talented 76-year-old singer died, but we have seen too many people struggle with depression, something we don't talk about enough in our world. And we've seen too many people deal with enormous pressure of public life and expectations. Sometimes people just cannot live 
in the captivity of depression and pressure. Sometimes they just cannot live. And so they opt to end the pain themselves. And each time, the earth shakes a little bit. Suicide has been devastating for a long time, but it seems like lately we're hearing even more about it because of the pandemic. A lot more about mental health issues. In the past five, or past two months, sorry, five NCAA athletes have taken their lives. Among them, 20-year-old Lauren Burnett from James Madison University, who excelled in softball. And Katie Meyer, who at the age of 22, was a star goalkeeper for the Stanford team of soccer. The University of Wisconsin cross-country and track runner Sarah Schultz was just 21 when she died. And it shakes us up. It shakes our foundation to hear about young people with a promising future whose lives end way too early and so tragically. This epidemic of hopelessness has also crept into the military. In the past year, seven Navy sailors committed suicide from one aircraft carrier, the USS George Washington. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin lamented that suicide rates among our service members are too high. There is just so much pressure to succeed and so little understanding about dealing with the pressures of depression. The earth shakes again and again, but sometimes, sometimes, we can be the ones to offer some hope to someone who has given up. Now, Paul and Silas, in our story for today, you might think, well, they are certainly the ones who have every right to feel depressed, who won't want to give up. They were beaten, they were stripped, they were thrown into prison because they healed a slave girl. And they weren't just put in prison, they were put in like the maximum security prison, the innermost area, the innermost room. And that's got to be depressing, right? And yet, when we read the story, they didn't seem to feel lost or sad. With their backs still stinging from the lashes, with their feet shackled up, what did Paul and Silas do but worship God and sing songs? They found holy joy, even in the midst of a very miserable situation. So actually, no, it's not Paul and Silas who are the ones who've lost hope here. But there is someone in the story who was at risk of injuring himself. The jailer. The jailer woke up and realized the prisoners that he was in charge of could escape. Because of that earthquake, he'd fallen asleep on the job. His one job, his one job was to watch the prisoners, but he had failed. He was a jailer failure. He drew out his sword, and he was just about to kill himself when Paul shouted, Do not harm yourself. We are all here. And those words stopped the earth from shaking for that jailer. Do not harm yourself. It's kind of amazing to me that Paul had such compassion for the one who was keeping him in prison. I mean, really, for all intents and purposes, the jailer was kind of his enemy, right? But Paul saw and had compassion for a human being who was in need. A flesh and blood human being who sometimes makes mistakes. A human being who sometimes falls asleep at the wrong time. A human being who felt alone and hopeless. And because Paul and Silas responded to him in such a humane way, the other prisoners all responded as well. Not one of them tried to escape. They were all there. It's like they had all agreed that the life of the jailer was more important than a prison break. And that night, it could have gone very differently. But because Paul and Silas showed that they cared, and that God cared, that jailer's life was saved, and not just for that night, but for all time through his faith in Jesus Christ. And so do you notice the one thing that really changed in this story? The difference that happens here, it's that 
people started seeing each other as human beings. They were no longer titles and objects like jailer. They were no longer commodities like prisoner. They were people. Because Paul and Silas treated the jailer as human as a human being, the jailer treated them and the other prisoners as human beings too. And suddenly, did you notice nothing really changed? There was still a, you know, the, the building was still in shambles because of the earthquake, but all of a sudden the jailer didn't want to hurt himself. He saw, oh, wow, you've got lashes. You've got wounds on your back. Let me wash those. He saw them as human beings. He cared for them. All of a sudden, that jailer didn't care about the prison being destroyed or his job or that somebody might have escaped, but he cared about the people before him. And he took the prisoners to his house and washed the wounds from their feeding and he fed them. And his entire household was baptized and rejoiced that very hour, which is a reminder, it's the middle of the night, right? That all started with seeing and being seen, with respecting the humanity within each of us. Just imagine what we could do, how we could change the world if we no longer viewed people as labels, as athlete or addict or pregnant woman or sailor or jailer or prisoner or queer or celebrity. What if we just strive to see people as the, the complicated human being that they might be, someone who lives and breathes, someone who has worries and someone who bleeds, someone who hurts and has love. We could change the world if we could lower the labels and see the people. Now, that may not end all of the shaking of the earth that goes on when people take their lives, but it would help. It's our responsibility to listen if someone talks about hoping to die, and listen if someone shares feelings about feeling trapped or hopeless, and notice if someone's behavior is changed as they perhaps are preparing for some kind of final goodbye. So if you or someone you know needs that kind of help, you can offer up your own ears, your own hands, or you could invite them to contact the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, 800-273-TALK, T-A-L-K. Even in the darkness, we can still find light. Even at times when we might feel trapped in some ways, there's still hope. Even in the valley of the shadow of death, we need not fear evil. Our world is shaking in so many other ways, in war and inequality and sickness. We can still some of those tremors with outreach and empathy. We can affirm the humanity of others and inspire them to find hope. Amen. And there are just a couple of um, questions in your bulletin, things to think about as you go through your day. Um, one is, how did Paul see the slave girl and the jailer? How did he view them? Um, number two, when has your world been shaken up? And how did it change the way you saw things? I now invite you to confess with me the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 11. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now, before we have our prayers and intercession, I did want to call to your attention, um, this is Mother's Day, and we have a new mom. So, we just wanted to recognize Kelly and Andy. Is Anara with you? I don't see her. You're hiding her. They're hiding her baby. So, sometimes the earth shakes in a good way, and our, our lives are changed, and it's a great joy. So, I just wanted to officially um, welcome you. It's such a great joy. And feel free, I know you've got a little one. When we are saying our prayers, we invite people to stand around the perimeter on the outside aisle. Feel free to stay where you are with the sleeping baby. That's fine. Or if you just would prefer to sit, that's fine as well. But for others, I invite you to please rise um, and go to the outside aisle so that we can offer our prayers. After each petition, you will hear, Lord, in your mercy, your response is hear our prayer. from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, the people in need, and all of creation. Gentle shepherd, enable your church to respond to the voice of Jesus. Shake up our world and set us free through the renewing work of Jesus. Lead the Synod Assembly, which will take place this coming week, and give the gift of discernment to all voting members, including Mary Ellen Ivanko and Julie Enger, as well as all rostered leaders, including Pastor Sandy. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Feed your people at the table of creation. Prepare a safe place for those whose environments are dangerous or unhealthy, especially for those making difficult journeys. Prosper your creation for the sake of every living thing. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Warm the hearts of all who celebrate and all who mourn our Mother's Day. Accompany those yearning to be mothers. Keep us to heal. Help us to heal from broken family relationships. And open us to receive your nurturing love from all who serve mothering roles in our lives, including those who remember silently. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Seek out those who weep while they await healing or consolation. We pray this day, especially for those printed in our prayer list, for Jack and Carol, Glenn and Helen, the Carl family, for Andy, Doris, David, the Stahl family, Bill, Frankie, and Barbara. And among our friends, we pray for Keith, Susan, Bill, Danielle, Jay and family, Adelbert, Y.E., Jessica, John, Mary, Marcia, Frank, Elijah, Sarah, Cisco, Rachel, Ashley, Florence, Norma, Tina, Ray, Ron, William, Walter, Michelle, Rod, Julia, and Caroline, as well as those we remember now silently in our hearts. Set people in their path who can provide the care they need and wipe away every tear from their eyes. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with those responding to this pandemic around the world in hospitals and in vaccine and testing sites. Be with those who suffer with COVID and those who have lost loved ones to the virus. Watch over those who stand up for equality and justice issues made clearer for this pandemic. Break barriers that prevent political enemies from working together in places like Myanmar, Belarus, Ethiopia, Israel, Palestine, the Church of the Holy Land, Afghanistan, Haiti, and especially Ukraine. Fill us anew with your Holy Spirit. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless Baltimore and our online mission field. For our leaders, Larry and Brandon and Joe, and our bishops, Elizabeth and Bill, for those who seek healing through the 12-step programs usually offered in our coffee house. For our prayer partner, First Lutheran Church in you in Michigan. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
and rolled us in a great multitude of saints from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages. Wash us in your saving grace every day, guiding us to your waters of life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. You can return to your pew. And uh, we continue with our time of offering. Just a reminder, we don't have a plate right now, but we invite you to look at the bulletin. There are places where you can give online or text. There's also a box in the back, so there are other ways that you And now let us pray together the offering prayer. Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us for this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites us to this holy feast, and all are welcome. You don't have to be a member of this congregation. You don't have to be a Lutheran. The gifts of God are free. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come.
Thank you to all of our helpers for communion this morning. That was very nice. Now we're going to pray. Let us all pray together. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup, we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. So, the announcement for mission of the pink sheet that's on, in your bulletin. Um, just a couple of things. Sunday School and Adult Forum. We are going to continue to have the 9 o'clock Sunday School through Pentecost, which is June 5th, and that's also the day when Inara is going to be baptized, so we're looking forward to that. Um, during the adult forum, because it's topical, we're going to be looking at the ELCA social statement on abortion. I know it's, a, it's something that we're talking about, we might as well offer just a chance for people to reflect on, on you know, a theological view of things. Um, the capital campaign kickoff lunch is happening. And if you would like to sign up online, that's probably the easiest. But if you want to and you're here, just rip off that last page of your bulletin and just say if you'll be able to join us for lunch. We just want to make sure we have enough for everybody. So we just love to have an RSVP. And it's just to let you know what, what we're planning on some of the church improvements for the capital campaign, which leads up to our 200th anniversary. First English will be 200 years old in the year 2025. There will be no Thursday Bible studies. Uh, we have church assembly, like synod assembly, this coming up week. So, um, and that's why we had prayers for synod assembly in our own services for today. Council meets on May 10th, which is Tuesday at 7 o'clock. So if you are interested in joining, that's information on how to do that right there. Um, I do know they are planning a nice little gathering, like the fellowship time after church. Please pop over. We, we especially want to recognize and celebrate people who are honoring moms today. And that could be anybody. Anybody who's honoring a mom is, is welcome to, to this very special time. Um, along those lines, I suppose, we have a memorial service. I wanted to make sure that you knew about the last Saturday of this month on May 28th at 10 o'clock. We are finally getting around to the service for Kathy Nelson, who died during COVID during, in December, and it was um, not possible to have a service. But we will be having a memorial service, of course, who are invited, and your prayers are very much welcome. And now, our blessing. God, the author of life, the living cornerstone and the life-giving spirit of adoption, Bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending song is When in Our Music, so please rise if you are able for that sending song. Amen. 